Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we're going to get into topic 6.5, which is on the regulation of gene expression. So this whole unit is on gene expression and regulation, and we're going to be getting into the regulation of it today. And why does it even need to be regulated? Um, well, we've been talking about how gene expression is the whole process by which DNA is transcribed into mRNA, then mRNA is translated into a chain of amino acids, which are then thus folded to make proteins. And those proteins do a wide, wide variety of jobs, right? So that is what gene expression is. And it needs to be controlled. And you don't want to be expressing genes that, well, you shouldn't express. Or you should be able to express genes depending on changes in the environment. So the two bullet points I put over here are all organisms... All organisms must regulate which genes are expressed and which proteins are synthesized. It doesn't matter if you're a prokaryote or if you're a, I don't know, blue whale or something. You need to regulate your genes. Um, and genes expression must be altered in response to environmental changes. And we're going to look at one very famous example of how prokaryotes alter their gene expression in re response to environmental changes. Okay, so you can't be expressing all the same genes at all the same times. It needs to be controlled, and we're going to look at how uh, a, d a few different methods to how it's controlled. Um, the first of which are going to be called operons, um, which are the processes through which, well, it's, it's really it's a segment of DNA with, uh, with different components that coordinate um, the production of enzymes in a pathway or the production of proteins. It's a group of uh, it's a group of genes, or a, I'll just read it. It's a stretch of DNA with a promoter, operator, and coordinately regulated group of genes that function in a pathway. So a whole metabolic pathway is regulated by one stretch of genes called an operon in bacteria and prokaryotes, okay? And we're going to be looking at um, eukaryotes later on in this video, but we're going to start with prokaryotes and operons. So we're going to take a closer look at one operon in particular, called a very famous one called the LAC operon. All right, so here it is. Um, the LAC operon deals with an enzyme that we've talked about before, which is lactase, um, or deals more with the sugar lactose, which we've discussed in this class before too. Um, but here's the thing. Bacteria produce enzymes to digest lactose when it's present or when glucose is unavailable in the environment. All right, so pretend you're a bacterial cell for a little bit, and you're in an environment where there's not a whole lot of glucose to go around, and, you know, ideally you'd have glucose. You'd use that for um, making your ATP and keeping yourself alive. But instead, you have lactose available. So what's the bacterial cell going to do? Well, it's going to start producing lactase for itself to digest that lactose and get ATP and get eventually get glucose out of it because glucose is not available in the environment. All right, so that's where the lac operon comes in. Okay. Uh, so let's get into a couple of the parts of the LAC operon. And here it is. As I said before, it's a stretch of DNA um, that needs to be transcribed or not transcribed depending on whether or not there's lactose in the environment. All right, so here's, uh, here's our promoter. We've discussed the definition of a promoter before. It's the part of the DNA where RNA polymerase, which is our enzyme that's going to be making new RNA uh, nucleotides, is going to be actually transcribing. Um, that's where it binds. It's called the promoter. Um, but a new thing that we haven't looked at yet is the operator. An operator is another stretch of DNA. It acts as kind of like an on-off switch for what's called the operon. Um, and it controls access to RNA polymerase to get to the genes downstream. So here's what we call the, I'm going to add this over here, the LAC genes are what we call the coding region. Okay, so these, these genes over here, are going to be the ones that RNA polymerase is going to make a transcript of, and that transcript is going to be modified and sent to the ribosome to produce uh, to produce lactase genes, or more specifically, beta-galactosidase, but whatever. Um, but here's the thing. These other sections here that I color-coded, those are not coding. Those are not going to be... Uh, those are not going to be treated as, like, say, exons that are going to be expressed. Um, but they serve a very, very important function in that they allow enzymes to, to or excuse me, well, yeah, different enzymes and uh, proteins to bind to them um, to regulate gene expression. Okay, so uh, that's our coding region. These are not our coding region. Um, but we do have another, well, kind of coding region over here. It's called the regulatory gene. Um, and lac I, in this case, that's an I. It's italic and uh, uppercase. But um, 
it codes for a protein called the LAC repressor. And here's the repressor. That's a protein that's going to bind to the operator and block the attachment of RNA polymerase to the promoter. Okay, so a repressor is going to prevent, it's going to repress expression, it's going to prevent expression from happening. It's not going to let RNA polymerase get to the genes over here. So here's RNA polymerase. It it's, can't even really bind to the promoter because the repre repressor is in the way, and it definitely can't travel down in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction downstream and get to these lac genes over here and start, to ex start expressing them. Okay, so it can't access the coding region as long as the repressor is there. Okay, um, but back to our scenario with our bacteria. Pretend you're a bacterial cell, and wow, you just fell into a vat of milk <laughs> or something. So there's lots of lactose available to you, and hooray! Um, lactose, in this case, is or an isomer of lactose called allolactose, acts as an inducer, which is a special molecule that inactivates the repressor protein. All right, so the lac operon, a term that we use for it is that it's inducible. When it, in the presence of a certain molecule, which is called an inducer, that this, uh, this pathway is turned on, okay? So to turn on, this is why we call it, uh, this is why we call the operator the on-off switch. In order to flip the switch, okay, this molecule needs to bind to the repressor and get the repressor out of the way, okay? So this uh, allolactose binds to the lac repressor and then, as a result, RNA polymerase is able to make a nice transcript of, uh, well, of this genes, of these lac genes over here. I actually made this too long. It should be like, it should be like that. Yeah. But anyway, uh, RNA polymerase is able to slide down there and produce an mRNA uh, transcript, as I labeled up here. Um, so there you have it. That is the lac operon. It is an inducible system. Um, as opposed to another example we'll just briefly talk about, we won't discuss it way too much, is the trip operon or tryptophan operon. Um, the if tryptophan operon is what we call repressible. It's the opposite of inducible, um, meaning that in the presence of, of uh, I think it's tryptophan itself is the co-repressor, um, in the presence of a certain molecule, it's going to bind to the repressor and it's going to force the repressor to deactivate uh, the genes. So in uh, the trip operon, the trip operon is being expressed all the time until the special molecule, not the inducer this time, the co-repressor, activates the repressor and turns the genes off. Okay, it turns the operon off. So the trip operon as opposed to the lac operon is what we call repressible. Okay, um, so that is uh, gene expression or regulation of gene expression in prokaryotes. In the next video, we're going to get into gene expression of eukaryotes and all the different ways that eukaryotes can regulate their genes. All right, see you next time.